In this video, we're going to talk about the spring force, which is known as Hooke's Law. Now, this is named after Robert Hooke, who was an um, English scientist in the 1600s that studied astronomy and biology. He came up with the word cell, um, and we famously actually don't know what he looks like, kind of like Henry Cavendish, um, only Hooke did have portraits done of himself. They just, however, mysteriously disappeared from the Royal Society. People think that because Isaac Newton and Robert Hooke had a rivalry, um, that Isaac Newton secretly had all of his portraits either hidden or destroyed from the Royal Society, and I feel like that would be a really good side quest for National Treasure whenever it becomes a video game. Anyway, so let's take a look at a simulator of a spring to understand what the spring force is. So here I have a spring, and this little robot arm is going to pull on the spring. We're going to see the force of the spring, um, represented as a blue arrow, and the displacement from equilibrium position as a green arrow. So this dotted line right here is where the spring is at um, when it's relaxed, when nothing is pulling on it or compressing it. And when we begin to pull on the spring, we'll notice that the spring force increases, meaning that the spring is trying to pull back to the left. Now notice that the spring force to the left and the displacement to the right, they're in opposite directions. And as I push to compress the spring from its equilibrium position, the spring force is going to point to the right, right, because the spring is pushing against the arm to the right, um, the more that it is compressed to the left. So let's draw um, this situation for ourselves in our notebook so that we can wrap our minds around what this is. So to do this, let's draw the spring in three different positions. Okay, so one, two, three. <laughs> Very parallel. Uh, and we're going to have a spring attached, okay, right here, <laughs> nice little spring, with no, uh, or we can put a box on it, that's actually pretty common, let's say that there's a box but there's no friction between the surface uh, and the box. And let's draw a dotted line through all three graphs, and we're going to call this the equilibrium position. So this is equilibrium, where the spring is naturally at its relaxed length. So basically, we can compress the spring. So let's say that the spring is real smushed in this drawing. The box doesn't have to be smooshed too. Um, and you would say that this displacement from equilibrium is to the left. We'll call that delta x. And if you can imagine, because you've compressed the spring, it is pushing the box to the right. So we would call that the force of the spring to the right. Okay, now below, let's draw what would happen if the box was. Um, to the right, meaning it was stretching the spring. And we're assuming that this box and the spring, they're like glued together. Okay, so now the spring is stretched out. And again, the spring is attached to the box, so it's actually going to be pulling the box backwards to the left. So we'll call that the spring force. And notice that our displacement from equilibrium now is to the right, delta x. So the idea here is that the force um, of the spring and the distance stretched, or the displacement from equilibrium, they're in opposite directions. So I'm going to have a relationship where there is a force of the spring, and it is equal to negative, the opposite direction, of something times the displacement. Now, every spring has what we call its own spring constant. Okay, so k is a spring constant. And this describes the rigidity, or we can call this the strength of the spring. So negative k, and then delta x, or the change in position. Um, from equilibrium. So we have to remember that when we, we think about that equilibrium, right, delta x is going to be x minus x naught. The idea is that we're basically saying that this is the equilibrium of the spring. And normally we just pretend that it's zero. Uh, okay, so this really makes sense when we think about um, practice problems and, and how to use this. Oh, and before we do that, let's remember that um, 
the spring constant has units of newtons per meter. Okay, so let's do some practice problems and see how this works. A two kilogram box is pushed up against a 600 newton per meter spring on a horizontal frictionless surface. How much force is requ required to compress the spring 0.1 meters? Okay, so this is exactly the kind of situation that we were just drawing. There's a spring, um, it's attached to a wall or something, I don't know, it doesn't say, and that spring is compressed. Okay, so box is up against the spring, no friction here, that's good. And you know, okay, so the force required to compress it, 0.1, the idea would be that there's some equilibrium position that the box is being compressed from. We'll call that delta x. That's 0.1 meters. And our question is, how much do you have to push on it? Your push to keep it um, compressed or to compress it that much. Well, so the idea here is that the force that you push with, we'll call this, you can call it F push, I'll just call it F is going to be equal to the force of the spring at this distance. So really the problem is asking you to figure out what will the force of the spring be at 0.1 meters, and then that's how much you have to push against it in order to balance it uh, or to act against it. So let's just think about the force of the spring. We don't really need to think about that push so much. Um, okay, and we know that the spring constant, K, is 600 newtons per meter. Okay, so now we have enough information to solve the problem. Hooke's law, the force of the spring is negative K delta X. I want to figure out what the force of the spring is. There's no rearranging that needs to be done. I just plug in my numbers. So 600 newtons per meter times the change in position. Oh, okay, so now this is kind of important. The force of the spring is positive, and the displacement from equilibrium is to the left, so we actually have to make that a negative number. So we would say negative 0.1 meters. And I would put negative 0.1 meters in for my displacement. Again, the reason why that's important is because now I'm going to get a positive number. Uh, and 600 times 0.1 is 60. So again, a positive number. The meters cancel, and I'm left with newtons. So the force of the spring is 60 newtons, and the positiveness just means that it is to the right. Easy. OK, let's do another example. You draw an arrow back 0.5 meters. If it takes 100 newtons of force to hold the arrow in place, what is the strength of the bow? OK, so real quick, the strength of the bow. Maybe it would say the rigid rigidity of the bow strings or whatever. This means that we are being asked to find the spring constant K. And I don't know that I've stated this explicitly, but remember that capital K is half the mass times velocity squared. So we're actually using this as like a lowercase k. That's the spring constant. Just in case you have kinetic energies and spring constants together, know that that is the difference between them. Okay. So we're trying to find the spring constant, and I, I'm given two pieces of information. Let me see if I can just draw this. Okay, so here's the bow, and the arrow has been pulled back. Um, and we are assuming, I'll draw like a little line to help me think about it, that it's pulled back, so delta x is 0.5 meters, um, so again, negative 0 0.5 meters would make it negative because it's back and now the force um, of u the force that you're holding with we'll call that f just for the force that you hold with it has to be equal to the force of the spring in this example so just like before in this problem we're just really trying to find the force of the spring uh, or in this case the bow and arrow Again, a bow and arrow isn't a spring, but it is elastic, it's stretchy, it's going to try and return to its original shape, so we can model it um, with Hooke's Law for a spring force. Um, although, if you are an actual archer, you, you would use a bit more of a complicated method because bow strings are at angles and they're not, they don't ideally follow um, Hooke's Law, but that doesn't matter for us.
So anyway, we're trying to find the force of the spring in this problem. I'm sorry, we're told that your pull is 100 newtons and therefore you know the force of the spring is 100 newtons also. And if you want to find K, then you'll take a look at Hooke's law. Force of the spring equals negative Kx delta x. And ba-boom, we know negative 0.5 meters is delta x, the distance from equilibrium. The force of the spring is 100 newtons, and we want to find k. So how do we find k? Well, we rearrange the problem. Um, I like to find positive numbers. So what I would do is I would actually divide both sides by negative delta x to get rid of delta x and the negative. OK, so now I know that k is equal to the force of the spring divided by the negative of the uh, displacement from equilibrium. So 100 newtons divided by negative, negative 0.5 meters, um, which makes my answer positive. And this is going to give me 200 newtons per meter. Sometimes the negative thing can be confusing. Y you just need to know that K is always a positive value. You're, you're never going to have a negative spring constant, like the actual magnitude of it. Um, so if you are working on a problem and you accidentally get a negative number, it's likely that you have the correct um, amount uh, for the spring force, but that you messed something up with a negative sign, and you should just ignore it. That's not always the case, but it is most of the time. Okay, let's do one more example. You attach a 3 kilogram mass to a hanging 60 newton per meter spring and slowly lower it until it is hanging at rest. How far has the spring stretched? Okay, so this is, um, this is worded a very specific way. If you were to take this 3 kilogram mass and just drop it on the spring, then it would begin to bounce up and down. But because you are slowly lowering it, I'm going to draw this um, as an example here because you are slowly lowering it, that that means that when you finally get it to the bottom, um, it's not going to be bouncing up and down. And that means that the force of the spring, which I'll call F, S, the force of the spring is going to be equal to the weight of that 3 kilogram block, which is 3 times 10, or 30 newtons. So you discovered that the force of the spring is 30 newtons. Now, the idea of how far has it stretched, there's going to be some initial length of the spring. And when you lower it, there is a new position that it stretches. So this, in this problem, this is the thing that we're trying to find. We're trying to figure out delta x. How far has it stretched from its equilibrium position? And notice that if I decide the spring force is going to be up, and I use that as a positive 30, then my answer should be negative because the spring is being stretched down. Uh, we know k, the spring constant, so remember, again, lowercase k, it's not kinetic energy, is 60 newtons per meter. And now I can use Hooke's law to try and figure out delta x. OK, so to get delta x by itself, it's really easy. I just divide both sides by negative k. Pew, pew. And delta x is going to be the force of the spring, which is 30 newtons. And then I divide that by um, negative k, so negative 60 newtons per meter. The newtons cancel out. I'm left with uh, negative 0.5, and that's going to be 1 over 1 over meters, which that is actually just a meter. And boom, I have figured out how uh, far the spring has been stretched from its original position, 0.5 meters down, so like 50 centimeters down from its original position, which is a, a pretty big number. Okay, so in this video we've talked about um, really just what Hooke's Law is conceptually and how to use it. It's very straightforward. Uh, you can, if you want, get into the habit of just relating the magnitude. So that would be like saying... Um,
you like put absolute value bars on both sides. You just look at the magnitude. That's something that you can do. So it just looks like K delta X. And another thing is sometimes you can get really clever and just think of delta X as X minus X naught and just assume that the initial equilibrium position is always zero. So that really the force of the spring it kicks. It's just kx. Um, this relationship is a really simplified and easy kind of relationship. You can just think about the, the negative numbers that should it be left, should it be right. Um, but it's kind of up to you when you want to do that. What we did with this like actual big equation, force of the spring, negative, k delta x. If you have no issues thinking like that, great, go for it. If you do much better with an equation where you just are rearranging l letters and you don't have to deal with the positive and the negative, feel free to just use a simplified form of the equation like this. It might help you out um, in, in future problems. In any case, this video is done.